Hi everyone, welcome back. What a strange fall we are having. Normally by this time, grackles and red-winged blackbirds are gone, but some of them are still lingering and visiting our bird feeders, which we actually don't mind because they don't arrive in those huge flocks, emptying our feeders in no time. And at the same time, Sandra from our customer care just spotted a bunch of evening grosbeaks under her bird feeders. So if you're in our area, keep your eyes peeled. The evening grosbeaks are around. And another thing that's happened in the past week or so, I've received a couple of emails from you asking what type of peanuts to offer in the Squirrel Buster nut feeder. Well, you can actually offer any kind of shelled nuts, not just peanuts. It all depends on what kind of behavior you want to observe at the feeder. Did you notice that it comes with two meshes of two different sizes? So if you want the birds to stay on the feeder and you want to watch them peck on their food and eat there for a while, then uh, switch to the smaller mesh. It has those smaller squares. It's very easy to interchange the two. With that mash, you can also offer black oil sunflower seeds and even dried mealworms and suet nuggets. But if you want to attract or to accommodate the birds that like to kind of pick a piece of food and then fly off either to eat it somewhere else or to hide it somewhere else, then switch to the larger mesh, the one with the larger squares. You can also use that mesh to offer fresh fruits like apples, bananas and grapes and even oranges. So try it out. Let me know how it goes. Right now I am trying actually two types of food with a smaller mesh, uh, dried fly lover and peanuts. I'm really curious to see how my fall birds will react to this kind of menu. In the summer, Bill and Lori watched a hornet's nest being built in the eve of their house. They were absolutely fascinated with that. And then one day they woke up to find the nest destroyed. So they are curious to find out whether birds did that and whether actually birds are immune to hornet stings. Hi, Bill and Lori, and also to you, Sylvie in Quebec. I decided to respond to both parties at the same time, mainly because you're asking me somewhat similar questions. Are birds immune to the stings of wasps and hornets? You might as well throw honeybees into the mix as well. First, it's well known that there are bird species out there that are actually specialized in the killing and eating of bees. They are aptly called bee eaters. There's also a hawk species in Europe called the honey buzzard that also feasts upon the larvae of bees and wasps. Other bird species known as honey guides and honey eaters not only feed upon the larvae but also on the wax in the hives of bees without being harmed by their stinging prey. But none of these birds are found in North America though. Well over 20 bird species on our continent do actively seek out and prey upon bees, wasps, and hornets. Among the most prominent backyard feeder birds include magpies, cardinals, mockingbirds, starlings, blue jays, wrens, and various kinds of woodpeckers. So this begs the question, do these birds have to be concerned about the stings of any of these insects? The answer is a qualified yes but mostly regarding wasps and hornets, whereupon some species can sting multiple times to inject their venom. For the most part, unless a given bird is actually seeking out a wasp or hornet nest to eat either adults, larvae, or the wax, these stinging insects and the birds largely leave each other alone. Having said that, I've seen many an annoyed hummingbird trying to gain access to a feeder coated with wasp, but generally giving way. Birds have two forms of protection. First and foremost, their rather thick coat of feathers with few exposed skin areas make it difficult for the insects to actually sting with any effectiveness. Birds are also quite fast and can often evade attacks of the insects. And just a sting or two or three does not usually provide enough venom to be a problem. But on occasion, there are cases when a bird becomes overwhelmed with a large horde of wasps and hornets and gets stung enough to die. We should be thankful that some birds out there do count wasps and hornets among their diets, otherwise our outdoor picnics might be even less pleasurable. With so many bird species facing imminent extinction in the world today for multitudinous reasons, it's always refreshing to hear that the number of bird species on our planet has recently increased by one. A new bird species called the Subantarctic Rayodito has been discovered living among the Diego Ramirez Islands in the southernmost part of South America, specifically 100 kilometers from southern Chile's Cape Horn. 
The investigation spans six years, during which a team of scientists, headed by Ricardo Rossi of the Cape Horn International Center of the Universidad de Magallanes in Chile, captured and measured 13 specimens of the new bird. While it does resemble a cavity-nesting Rayodito species that inhabits the forests of southern Patagonia, the heavier sub-Antarctic Rayodito sports a longer and wider bill and longer legs, but a significantly shorter tail. What was especially surprising to Rossi and his team was that this particular Rayodito is nesting in a habitat with literally no woody plants such as bushes or trees. It's literally existing on a somewhat bare island archipelago with a harsh tundra-like climate in the middle of the ocean. The really good news though is twofold. There are no mammalian predators and the bird's island habitat is enveloped among the 140,000 square kilometers comprising the Diego Ramirez Islands Drake Passage Marine Park created in 2017. As Rossi points out, who knows what other species new to humankind birds or otherwise, may be found there. I know the summer is over and most migratory birds are gone, but do you recall ever hearing this song? We do in the summer all the time. So this is a very a cute little brown bird that belongs to the thrush family. American robins and bluebirds belong to that family as well. Veries are often confused with other common uh, thrushes like the wood thrush and the hermit thrush. When I see one of them, I always check their chest and belly. So basically, veeries barely have any markings or spots on their chest and their bellies are completely white and if you check out the wood and the hermit thrushes they have a lot of spots and markings on their chest and their bellies look at the two pictures from Cornell so here's Viri versus the wood thrush and here's Viri versus the hermit thrush Viri's are migratory, basically breeding in upper U.S. states and lower Canada. Their preferred habitat here in North America, those damp deciduous forests next to swamps and wetlands and rivers and uh, streams. Here in our backyard, we see and hear them every summer because part of our property backs on wetlands and just across the road, there's a brook that runs through our town. Just like robins, they change their diet diets with seasons. Uh, during their breeding season they eat mostly insects and some fruit uh, and then for the rest of the year they switch to berries and fruit. In the summer they have been spotted eating things like termites, ants and wasps, salamanders and even little frogs. They forage on the ground hopping not walking when looking for their food. Males and females are indistinguishable. Males leave their wintering grounds first and females follow. Viries arrive at their breeding grounds basically at the end of April, beginning of May, and then their peak fall migration is at the end of August, beginning of September. So here they've been gone for quite a while. Males are super territorial and the older they get, the more territory they try to claim. Pairs form as soon as they arrive at their breeding grounds and in the past they were considered to be monogamous birds but recently polygamy has been observed among these birds. Females build nests on the ground or very close to the ground but in thick vegetation. She normally has one brood per season four eggs on average. The colors of the eggs are very pretty, just like the robins, that bluish and greenish. Both parents feed the young, but males have also been seen bringing food to multiple nests at the same time. Cowbirds use Viri's nest to dump their eggs and Viri's actually tolerate them. Wasn't it fun to see what kind of birds actually eat suet? Let's check out the top five. Here's the third place.
the second place. And the grand prize winner, well, November is usually so dreary here, so we thought we would introduce a little bit of sunshine. So November's theme is yellow birds. Good luck, everyone.